Welcome to the Centerport United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Roy Grubbs and alongside our music director, Joe Ferrante, we welcome you to this time of prayer and music, continuing in this season of Easter. As you can see on our display on our altar table, the tomb is still visible and the stone rolled away, representing the risen Christ that is among us always and living on this side of Easter. We do need that reminder, don't we, that we are not alone. And sometimes we wonder, where is God? It seems like so much is happening, and sometimes you may feel alone. Sometimes I do too. But we need to remember that God is always there, and is everywhere, and that everywhere we go is sacred space, and everywhere we go, is actually holy ground. And when we think of that, that may shift our understanding just a bit of who God is and who we are called to be. We're going to begin tonight with just a centering, silent prayer. I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes and clear out whatever distractions have filled your day. Breathe out. As you breathe in, let that be the whole Spirit. Amen. And we have several hymns tonight that are just chant-like hymns. Many of them are just two or three lines long. And so we're going to sing them through twice. After you listen, if you don't already know them, join me at home and sing along with me. Sometimes it's very hard to be still, isn't it? Life comes at us from all directions. We have lists every day of what we need to accomplish. We have work, school, errands to run, even in the middle of a pandemic. Whether we're doing it from home or doing it now out in the world, life is still busy and seems like it's getting busier again. Let's try to remember what truly is important, what is the most important in life. Sometimes we get caught up in schedules and in things to accomplish, but it's not really centered around what is the most important. And really that is God and love. After all, the greatest commandment is loving God and loving one another. And we can only do that when we have our eyes fixed on the cross, and when we open ourselves to experience God wherever we are. And that is what this next hymn is really saying to us. It's entitled, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Let us be in an attitude of prayer. If every part of my life is with you and in you, Lord, then everything is made good. Even the things I struggle not to resent, even the straining and hurtful encounters. Let every moment of my life be your moment, whether or not I consciously remember you and make me more open to the pulse of your life and the breath of your love. Amen. Our next hymn is really asking God to hear us. We know that God does, but it's in the asking that we move even closer to God. It's called, O oh Lord, Hear My Prayer. Recognize that you have created them, 
and recognize that you think each person that ever walks this earth is the most beautiful creation you have ever made. Lord, help us to see others with your eyes, with your love, and help us to live into that and not stop until the world changes and your kingdom of heaven is reigning more fully here on earth. Help us to be your agents of change. Just like your son was when he was here and taught and prayed and healed and even offered his whole life in every way for us and taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And tonight we welcome Susan Kleiner back to share her gift of the flute on this beautiful piece called The Call by Joaquin Anderson.
case called a calm. I don't know if that's related to our English word calm in any way, but I can tell you that that just brought a sense of peace over this entire sanctuary and certainly over myself. Thank you very much. And don't we need that right now? Don't we need that? You know, the Bible is full of times, stories, and situations, quite like the one we're living in now. We may think that this is one of the worst times the world has ever seen, but there have been times that have been equally as difficult for our world and for humanity. And the types of things that we are going through right now have happened in some way before. We may be in a unique time with unique challenges, but the world has gone through a lot of difficult times. And people and leaders that we read about in our Holy Scriptures have gone through incredibly difficult periods as well. Maybe themselves, or maybe in their groups, their families, their entire nationalities. We come across a story from the book of Exodus, chapter 3. And this is where we encounter this person named Moses. And this is before he is headed into Egypt to combat Pharaoh and to try to free the Jews. This is when God originally calls him and calls him to a mountainside and reveals more of who God is in a way that Moses is just in awe of. And I think that's a time that we need to be in collectively as people. I think we need to step back, stand back, and have a sense of awe as to who God is and what God has done for all of us. And then maybe, just maybe, things will begin to change within ourselves and radiate out. Let's listen to these powerful words from Scripture. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, that holy ground is truly something to think about. You know, I'm looking at every year, I look outside and see spring, and I'm always in awe. In fact, we had our Easter service outside, and I had the congregation just stop and spend time just feeling the warmth of the sun on their face, listening to the birds chirp, and then open their eyes and stay silent and look around at the colors that were already starting to come forth in the trees and on the ground. Do you stop to do that? Do you stop to do that every day? And do you stop sometimes in the most frantic parts of your day, to stop and either look out the window or breathe or just soak in what God has created for all of us. Here in Centerport, we live in a very beautiful part of Long Island. 
and my wife and I have been blessed to see many beautiful parts of this nation and several other countries as well. You know, each country in this world can boast beauty and wonder. There are beautiful places and beautiful people, beautiful animals and flowers and mountains, streams, valleys, you name it, everywhere on this earth. And in fact, when we look at the earth from space, isn't it beautiful? I have to say, out of all the planets of the solar system, there is none that even compares to Earth. And quite frankly, all the science and astronomy that's out there, I have to say the Earth is beautiful to look at. That's not to say that there's not beauty elsewhere in the universe. But what beauty to behold. And from space, Earth just looks so peaceful. But it's not like that all the time, is it? And that does not come from God. The lack of peace on this planet comes from outside of God. And that comes from us and from the forces that we allow to consume us, to overwhelm us. Sometimes we cannot help that, but it's how we react it's how we internalize, and when we are rocking, where do we turn? Do we stop and breathe, or do we react? Moses did not know what he was being called to later on. But God knew that to get his attention, he needed to do something that no one had ever seen before. Moses came from a world that was very difficult, striven in war and famine and so many other things, disease, poverty, those that have and those that don't. Sound familiar? And the first thing God does is appear as a burning bush and speak to Moses and say, remove your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. God reveals just a peace in a way that a human could absorb who God is. And that's the same God that is with us today. And the same God that will be here always. The God who not only created this beautiful earth, you and me, the beautiful animals, flora and fauna, the air that we breathe, and all that we have. But the God who has created the universe, and the God who has created the microorganisms, as big and as infinitely small as you could possibly imagine. Maybe if we think about that and we take time to go for a walk and experience the beauty of spring, to see new life right before our eyes, we can connect it with the new life that God offers to us every day and recognize everywhere we go is holy ground. There is no such thing that is not in God's eyes and that everywhere a person is standing, they are standing on holy ground. And that the Spirit lives in every person that we see, in every animal, in every molecule of air that we breathe. Where is holy ground? It's not just here in the sanctuary. It's where you are. Wherever you are. Stand in awe. Kneel. Sit, close your eyes, and give thanks every step that you take. And remember, God is with you on the holy ground you tread on, everywhere that is. Thank you, God. Amen. The last hymn is aptly 
renamed Holy Ground. Remember, you are always on holy ground.